Hello. I'm going to make a magic wand out of a spindle like this. I've already played with this a little bit and put some uh, wire on it and piddled around just seeing what I'd like. But that's not the one I'm going to use. This is the one I'm going to use. It's this one right here. It's a little bit longer. And I have already glued with E6000 this crystal into the handle. Um, I pre-did this. I put a ton of E6000 glue in there because I don't know how deep the hole is. And then I set it in a hole so it sets like this and was level and even and dried overnight just to make sure that it was good and secure. So now we're going to work on decorating it and turning it into a magic wand. So we have a few tools we're going to use. I have my heavy duty cutters and my normal cutters, which the wire I'm using today is an aluminum wire, so it's not going to hurt these at all. I have some flat nose, some round nose, some nylon jaw, in case I get kinks in the wire and need to smooth it out. Another pair of pointy flat nose. Not all of these are necessary. I have them, so I use them. A lot of times you can find another tool that will do all of it. I have a friend who could use her cutters for just about everything she did, and it just drove me crazy that she could do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these acrylic beads. And I had a package of pink, white, red, and black, and I mixed them in this bowl. And I picked out the ones that I want to use for this project because I happen to have that rose gold wire. I decided to use these beads and, and keep it in the pinks. So I've picked out some beads. I don't know that I'm going to need them because I have pre-strung some beads onto this spool of wire. I usually work from a spool or the coil of wire because to me it's just easier to have them on there and not need it all and and never run short of wire. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my heavier rose gold and I'm going to use some E6000 again because I want this to stay together and I'm going to put a little Ooh, this is almost dried. Let's see if we can wipe that off over here. Let's see if we can. I can get the big tube. I just thought this little one needed to be used up. And it's gonna have to come out in little bits, but it'll it'll still hold. Actually, you don't want to sit and watch me do that. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the bigger tube. So we can get it out faster. Maybe I can get the lid off. There we go. And I'm not really too concerned about how nice and neat it is. I don't want the glue to show, of course, but um, I think it's going to be kind of absorbed into the, not absorbed. Uh, the wire is going to cover it up real well. So I'm just going to start down here because I want to have, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I was trying to keep it from happening. But well, we'll just do this for now. I'm going to go into this groove so that I got a place for it to start. Because this is a little bit heavier wire than the other one. And I'm just going to wrap it several times to, to make like a bezel. And the glue is just for added security and I don't care how perfect it is I'm trying to you know keep the glue somewhat under control and I'm having to hold the wire down here so that um, it doesn't just continue to slide around it and it does that really easy so I've got it pretty much as full as I want it 
and I'm going to start coming down. <laughs> it's, it's really wanting to slip and slide a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and come down. Okay, so we've got a bit of a gap here, and there's lots of ways to fix gaps. Um, one thing I want to do is get rid of this pointy end right here because it's, it's a little sharper. So I'm going to just kind of put a little curly cue on it, a little circle. And then I can flatten that back down against the spindle. And now I'm just going to take my wire and work itself down. I'm going to go ahead and get kind of creative. I'm going to wrap around that little circle right there. And then I'm going to come down here. And this is just, uh-oh, you need to hold on to that. Not use too much pressure. Pressure. I just felt my crystal give. So I'm just going to wrap it down a ways. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Not with that. And I'm just adding it there. I'm going to have to set that back in its little hole because it's gotten crooked. So maybe you want to do that last. I thought doing it first would help, but we may have to come back and fix that, which is okay. Not an issue. And I'm just going to take this and on the wire and give it a curl. Yeah, that's going to fall out of there before I'm done. But that's okay. Because then I've already made the mistake and you guys don't have to. You'll know, you'll know what it needs or what it doesn't need. I'm just putting some twisties in there to kind of finish that out. So now I'm going to go with the thinner wire. And I am going to start wrapping crystals and stones and beads and what have you down here. Up here. Up and down here. I'm going to start here. And to try to keep it from slipping too much, I'm going to give it a little twist until it's nice and tight. I'm going to actually use a pair of pliers for this because it will allow me to get right up to the spindle and my fingers won't get in the way. It's also thin wire, so you don't want to go over because you could definitely make it snap. So I've pushed this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and snip that off because I can kind of camouflage that with some beads. Okay, we've got that where it's not going to slip. It's going to do another wrap, toss in a bead here and there. You will have to hold your beads in place as you go along. And occasionally you'll have to come up between beads like that and kind of separate. You can use as many or as few beads as you want. Yep, we did. We done lost it. That's okay. It's really okay. Maybe you need to just hold it in there so that you can do your bezel correctly and then glue it in when you're done. So I'm just going to continue wrapping. And I'm being pretty generous with the wire. I'm trying not to get a bunch of beads in one spot and, and separating with the wire. You tend to, or I tend to, let's forget the back is there, which we don't really want to do. We want to make sure we get beads everywhere. You know, this is for a princess magic wand. And every once in a while, give it an extra tight wrap in the middle of it so that it kind of stays in place. I can't tell you how many beads that I put on here. I just put, put them on like I liked them and went with that.
Now I'm going to turn directions because I wanted to anchor that bead a little bit. And it's okay to have some wraps without beads. A bit of a tangled mess here. Sorry about that. And it's even telling me it's spam. <laughs> so let's see. Where is my tangled mess? And we'll just keep going. What I'll do is I'll push all the beads to this end. And then I'll just pull some extra out, cut it off because I can always add it back on. Unless I, I did, I cut it wrong. Nope. Yep. Nope. Oh, the indecisive of crafting. <laughs> I thought I made it better, but I'm not sure. Okay. So now you get to see how many mistakes you can make. Ta -da! That's the disadvantage of using it off of a coil like that. To be safe, I'm going to go ahead and put a loop down here so that if I flip this around, the beads don't fly off. And I'm just going to keep wrapping until I get it how I want it and the amount of beads and spacing and however it is that makes you happy and now I'm going to come back up and fill in some of those spaces because we don't need it all the way to the bottom you got to have room for your hand but it's your wand so if you want to put it all the way to the bottom by all means. Okay, so now we're at the end of the wire and it can be a little shorter than that. And I'm going to take a pair of pliers, it doesn't matter which ones, and I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm going to find a bead that it can wrap around easily. And I think this big pink crystal right here should do the trick. Well, maybe not. So we're going to just wrap it around that one. I went around it to secure it. And now I'm going to tuck it into a wire piece in there. And there we go. It's all done. But, the, you know, it's still kind of plain. You could, there's so many things you could do with it. You could take um, some pre-strung beads and put them on there. Um, let me grab a couple things and show you some what-ifs, okay? Okay, I grabbed a couple things. I have a strand of what we call fused on the string, string beads, little pearls. So if I wanted to, I could glue that down or go get some wire and wire it in. And I could add some pearls if I wanted to, kind of like that. That's one option. You could add pearls and some ribbon. Let me find the end of this. Now, I, I'm just showing you some of the options that you could do with this. I don't know if I'm going to leave any of it like this. I was going to do it with the um, pearls. Let's start down here then. You could leave a streamer so that you've got, and then just wrap in some ribbon with it. And 
and I kind of like that. I like I kind of like that a lot. But I did have a little bit of fused on the string silver ones. So let's just see what happens when I add a little silver. This could be overkill. This could be just what it needs. And again, you want to put them in right and, and glue them. And so I think I like the, I'm not sure I like the silver. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and fix these the way, it, the way I'm going with it here with the ribbon and the pearls because I think it looks really nice. So I want to do it right. So what I'm going to do, besides continuing to make a mess, I knew I should have just made the picture, made the product, and not done a video. It's just seeming like that today. I am going to use my um, oh, I can't remember what this glue is called. That really stinky stuff. Fabrifix. That's it. I had to think about that for a minute. Mostly because I really want this to adhere faster than what the E6000 is going to do. So let's get Let's get the ribbon out of here to the side. Let's get the silver out of here completely so we don't make any more tangled messes, which as you can all see, that's my day today. That's my day. So I'm going to put some of this down. I'm going to be pretty generous because I can always bring the ribbon up to um, cover any glue. So we're going to leave that there. Find the end. I'm going to go ahead and stick that down and I'm going to wrap it pretty tight, as tight as I can, and hold it there. And then just wrap it around here. I can, you know, go up. Or, you know, separate your beads, however you want to wrap it, just as a little bit as an accent, I think is really pretty. Because I think the ribbon is what really makes it. And that silly little curly cue down there just gets into everything. And I, I want it to end down here with several wraps. So I'm going to get this glue. And... My pour glue is so thick. I need to fix that. So I got a little bit, not enough, but we're going to put that on there for now. And then we're just going to squeeze with both hands. And spread it out. I've got one more wrap. And I'm going to cut this off. I may have to use this glue for the crystals as fast as that's holding up there already. So we're done with this again the mess, the tangle. We're going to put that there. Before we go with the ribbon, which is right here, I'm going to take this pretty wire and wow, as much trouble as it gave me, it just came off right quick. I'm going to cut off a length of it. I'm going to take the coil out of it real quick. Straighten it out a little bit so it doesn't it's still going to coil because it's got memory. And I am just going to... I'm going to go in this bead right there. Because it's big enough. 
I'm going to go all the way out the end. I'll fix that in a little bit. I'm going to come up here and give some more color to the top. And then I'm just going to take this as, as just wire. And I made some kits for this. And many of the kits have different colors of wire. So I think it could be quite enjoyable. And I'm just wrapping this as accent to put some more pink in there. Trying not to separate those. I'm going to go all the way down and come back up just to use all the wire. And I think it'll go in that bead right there. So I'm going to get a pair of pliers and pull that tight. And I'm going to make a curly cue. Start off with a little circle. And you can only hold it with your round nose pliers for a little while because then it starts to curl up on itself. And now I'm going to take some flat nose pliers and just keep spiraling and make that pretty little spiral. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. Many, many times the wire is actually soft enough, especially that aluminum wire, that you can curl that with your fingers. So I'm really happy with this, minus the crystal where it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be in there, but that's okay. So I'm going to start this now. I have no idea how much I need, but to start this, I'm not going to worry about any glue right now. I'm just going to come under it. I'm leaving a good 12 to 18 inches. And I'm just going to tie it on. And I am going to go ahead and tie a knot because we want this to hold up. Actually, I kind of have a feeling this is probably going to go to my 8-year-old uh, granddaughter when I'm done. Okay, if you can see right here, I don't know if you can tell, i got a piece of wire that's sticking up and kind of further out and it could make it become loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some round nose, which you could do flat nose also, and I'm going to put a kink in that until it, it's kind of absorbed and then it's got this cute little curly cue. I hope you can see that. And so I'm just going to keep wrapping this, letting it be flat, letting it tighten up however it wants to do. And I'm going to come back down. I was going to try to come back down the other direction. So it kind of crisscrosses, but it's not really want to do that too much. And I'm back down here. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this to the other end. And because there's plenty of this ribbon left over, as you can tell, my first instinct was to tie a bow. I'm going to cut this right there. So these two streamers are the same. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this one on. So there would be four streamers all together. So now we have our magic wand with its streamers. You could make those longer or shorter, however you wanted. And now we're going to glue this crystal back in. And we're going to use this this time. And I'm sorry, it's going to be so close this way, so you're going to have to kind of, we're both going to have to kind of work around Okay, this glue is too thick. Let me find a different position to put this in, and I'll put the glue in, and then we'll go from there. I'll be right back. Okay, if you can see what I've done, I have filled it really full. I've went up around the sides, and now I'm going to push this in there. I'm going to take my time because I don't want it to 
ooze out, I kind of want it to go more down in the hole. And now I'm just going to hold this for a little bit. Being this is the handle, we want to make sure that this is nice and snug. You could always make yours the other way. My uh, grandson is a very big Harry Potter fan, and he told me that this should be the handle and this should be the point. So that's why we're making it that way. Now, if you're good and you feel creative with your wiring skills, you could easily wrap some wire around that and help secure it in place. But I can already tell this one's going to work really, really good. So here we have our magic wand. You can hold it like this if that's how you please. Or you can have it like this. We don't have too much stuff down here so the magic can flow out really easily. Ta -da. If you aren't happy with that, go ahead and fill it all the way. I like mine like this. So I'm going to leave it. And that, my friends, is my magic wand made out of a spindle. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.